We begin right away. Fitch Solutions has said Nigeria's rising inflation, which hit 34.19% in June, has already peaked and would moderate to less than 25% by the end of 2024. In its latest country risk report on Nigeria, the firm, which offers financial information services, uh, was saying a lot of things, uh, saying, however, that food prices will stay high due to weak domestic production caused by insecurity in agricultural regions and adverse weather conditions. Well, joining me for more on this, I have Oladipo Ajayi here. Fixed in common forex, Chapel Hill, Denham. Thank you, Aladipo, for joining me today. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me on. Right. Now, Fitch predicted that Nigeria's inflation has already peaked at 34.19% in June. Do you share the same sentiment and what are the pointers to this? Mr. Jay, if you can hear me, I was asking if you share the same sentiment yeah, no, with Fitch. Yeah. Right, please go ahead. Yeah, I think for me, I think we are getting closer to the end of this uh, volatile moving uh, inflation figure. And uh, if you look at the past three months uh, before uh, what happened in the month of June, we've been seeing inflation increasing at a, uh, at a decelerating rate. Um, so it simply means that um, we are getting to more like a peak, peak, a peak level. And uh, one of the reasons why I have actually put pitch my tent with pitch, uh, pitch on this uh, subject matter is the fact that um, the fiscal policy guys too, they already woken up to their responsibility and they have actually uh, rolled out some uh, palliatives that, that can help to actually cushion the effect of um, the roaring uh, food inflation. Um, they've actually um, gone ahead to actually give more like a tax rebate uh, to some on some food item and also um, allow um, importation of food item at, uh, at a free cost into the economy. All this is just uh, to ensure that uh, cost of food actually dropped. And um, if you sum this up with uh, the fact that we've been seeing more like um, a sticky uh, inflation uh, figure in the last uh, months, it, it brings to bear that uh, truly we could be getting closer uh, to the end of that uh, aggressive offset moving uh, inflation figure. But when you're talking about the month-on-month -month inflation, it sort of bucked the trend in June because month-on-month -month we're seeing reduction, but this time there was no reduction. Yeah, that's why I said uh, if you look at the past three months before the last one, okay. uh, you will notice that we've been seeing month-on-month -month, uh, uh, reduction in inflation figure. Uh, but what we saw last month was more like uh, an, um, an extraordinary or an out outline. And this could uh, also... Uh, uh, could be traceable to the fact that uh, when uh, um, FX uh, uh, price actually also went up a bit in, in that uh, uh, month under review, and uh, that could also have like a pass-through effect on on inflation figure. And also, um, we saw um, uh, further increase in prices on for some food item, and that actually pushed uh, inflation figure or upside. And um, one of the reasons why, I, like I said earlier on, why I agree with Fiji remains the fact that uh, I feel that everything that the fiscal policy guys uh, uh, actually launch out to do will start seeing the full effect in the next one, two, three months. And uh, what the effect will be is that um, it will lower the price of food uh, in the market and also help to actually bring down uh, food inflation. And don't also forget that uh, we are in the month of August already. And we are days uh, from the month of August. And uh, by September, we start uh, getting into adversity. Uh, if you check, uh, it is cyclical like when you look at uh, the trend. Uh, during harvest season, you tend to see the prices of food actually no dive, and that is actually the expectation that we are, we are actually expecting uh, from the month of September. We expect that to also cushion the effects of what the uh, fiscal policy guys are already doing, and the end goal will be the fact that uh, it will actually lower the interest rates. Uh, sorry, will lower the inflation uh, pressure on of food, which will also have uh, a direct impact on headline inflation. I like that you mentioned, you know, the interest rate. We'll come to that later. But then, are we truly seeing real consolidation from the fiscal authority? Because you've said a lot about them as some of the things they've rolled out. Because it would seem there is always a disconnect between measures being announced and what is on the ground. Well, uh, it's, it's some of those things um, when, uh, when it's sometimes I, I think uh, we tend to see that lag effect from when uh, policies are announced and the implementation. 
And that's one of the reasons why um, the call to the current government has always been that uh, we need to actually roll up our sleeve and actually know that uh, the time to act is now. Uh, because um, imagine if what they are doing now is something that they've rolled out since last year. I'm sure we'll not get to 34.19 inflation figure. Uh, some of these things would have uh, been actually curtailed all the while. Uh, but because we waited this long, that's one of the reasons why the impact has lingered this long. And uh, I agree with you that they need to actually act as, uh, as quickly as they can. Of course, we've been hearing um, um, information around that, that uh, they're already working on some of those things and some of the things are already in effect. Uh, but we are expecting the full implementation of, of, of these things uh, because the full implementation is what is going to bring about that positive effect uh, that, that we are talking about. Well, speaking of moderation, we're looking at 25% by year end. Maybe I should say Fitch is looking at 25% by year end. Are there telltale signs that point to that correctly? I mean, I would like us to sort of stay a bit on the signs of moderation. Well, for, for moderation, I, I think uh, it, it looks like uh, a bullish uh, number from Fitch. And, uh, but uh, speaking, uh, is not impossible. Uh, when you look at the beginning of the year, our target is to actually lower inflation to 21% by the end of the year. And uh, that's part of what uh, was in the budget. And uh, um, so when you look at where we are now and uh, where a feature thing we are going to and where we already projected that we are supposed to be, uh, we are, it's like uh, two different uh, trajectory. Uh, Fitch is saying that will be 25. Uh, we are looking at 21 before, but I know that by now, you expect um, the federal government to reject their numbers because their 21 is not uh, obtainable anymore. Uh, but uh, I feel that uh, the impact of what you do, if the impact is so strong enough, I think we can actually get to 25. Because it simply means that uh, all we need to see is an aggressive uh, drop in prices of uh, uh, food items, an aggressive drop in uh, headline inflation, and that uh, this could actually push in us uh, to where uh, Pitch has actually projected us to actually be by the end of the year. We need to be more like aggressive drop in month on month inflation, and this can actually uh, usher us into that 25%. It looks like it's all other, but I, I want to tell you that it's not something impossible. And like I mentioned, don't forget that the last latter part of the year, which is more from the month of September to like December, is more like an aggressive uh, harvest season. Uh, for, for farmers, and uh, if we are able to uh, get quality harvest in this season, that will also help aggressively to actually help us uh, actually get to, to that particular point in time, uh, that particular figure. The peak um, driver of uh, headline inflation currently has been food, and if we are able to actually stop the issue of food uh, inflation, I think it will have aggressive impact on on the overall inflation figure. And uh, don't forget that um, as much as we are doing that, we also need to look at the uh, side of uh, FX as well. So it simply means that uh, the central bank needs to do as much uh, as possible to ensure that there's stability in that window, so as to ensure that the past three effect will not actually be like a deterrent uh, to the expected figure that uh, Pitch has actually mentioned. Well, talking about 25% inflation, what does this mean for an average Nigerian? Who wants to understand what exactly we're talking about? So what it simply means is that um, the value of the money you are holding now will be better off by the end of the year. So what, that is just a simple uh, analysis uh, because it simply means that uh, uh, a naira that you are holding now, that uh, what you can actually buy now, uh, you will be able to buy more uh, by the end of uh, the year. And that, that sounds uh, like a promising uh, um, uh, prophecy that uh, the whole Nigeria has been waiting for. Okay, well, Nigeria's inflation and foreign exchange volatility, I mean, these twin, uh, I don't want to say twin evil, but I mean, these twins, right, uh, they've been a source of concern to the monetary authority, and we have seen an unending tightening of the monetary policy. Would you say this has yielded any result so far? Well, um, it would be unfair to say that uh, it has not been effective, uh, because to a great extent, uh, if, you have, uh, if we have allowed... Um, um, if the monetary policy guys has decided to just uh, pull their hands from the beginning of the year to where we are now, I'm sure the situation would have been worse. Off. I'm sure uh, uh, the value of Naira won't have been where it is now. Maybe would have been trading north of 2,000 Naira by now. 
Uh, but however, I, I think um, there should get to a place where um, we need to slow down on some of these aggressive policies uh, so that they won't be counterproductive. And I'm sure you know my stance around that uh, uh, because the last MPC meeting, I wasn't expecting any rate hike uh, because um, a 50 basis point, I don't think uh, there's anything that that uh, uh, has done already in the market. That has not done anything extraordinary uh, for me uh, because. Uh, I, I think uh, what uh, they said, what the monetary policy guys even did around the corridor, I think is even more effective than uh, actually um, actually increasing rate by another 50 basis points. And we also need to always consider the impact of uh, some of this uh, because, as we speak, uh, extending um, loan facilities to businesses at such a time like this uh, uh, will actually be very difficult. Uh, uh, before the rates like um, banks are already uh, extending loan. Uh, Facility to customer as high as uh, 34 percent. Uh, now imagine with another 50 basis points, so we are getting to close to another uh, around 35 percent, and uh, you expect this person to actually invest such money in a business, and uh, the business will generate uh, revenue, pay expenses, and declare profit and pay cost of fund from me. So it's it's not a very good uh, time uh, per se for me. Uh, but I understand the fiscal policy guy, uh, monetary policy guy. What they are trying to do, their key job is to to rein in inflation and, and maintain stability, effect stability. So they have actually keep um, uh, rates up perpetually to ensure that uh, that continue to attract foreign inflow. And uh, by so doing, that will continue to actually help to push in the effect of the volatile, uh, the volatile uh, naira. I, I feel that uh, we, we should get to the level where, or we are getting to a level where we need to slow down on that uh, to actually see the full effect of what we are done and also uh, look at what uh, the fiscal policy guys are doing and see how both can actually come together and marry both policies to actually uh, uh, bring out effective uh, results rather than uh, everyone actually doing their own by, their, by themselves. Right. I like how you've talked about the impact of this, you know, tight monetary policy. However, talk to us about, you know, the impact of the cumulative monetary policy decisions this year alone on the capital market, whether it's money market, fixed income market, or even the equities market. Well, what we have seen is that for equity markets, uh, you would have noticed that um, it's not been a very great time. And um, if you see the way the, uh, the, the the year started on a very great note. Uh, as at um, Q1, um, the equity market has gained over 30%, and uh, uh, which is actually a very good one. And uh, um, we saw banks post um, huge um, uh, results, uh, uh, basically some from uh, exchange gain and, and the likes, and that actually attracted a lot of uh, investments into that space. Uh, but um, from the month of February, we start seeing um, a change in uh, policy direction from the monetary policy guides, and that starts having effects on the market. Uh, um, as at the beginning of the year, one year paper, that's one year treasury bill, was actually trading around 7%. Uh, but as to speak today, I, 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 I can tell you that uh, one year paper is around 22% uh, already. So it simply means that uh, it has moved by, uh, by over about 1,500 basis points. Uh, from the beginning of the year to you see now. So what's that, and what that means is that uh, it's, full, it's actually bringing a lot of opportunity in the fiscal income space. It means that uh, that can actually attract new investment, both from domestic investors and from foreign investors. Uh, looking at a one-year instrument where you can actually earn effective yield of uh, about 27 to 28 percent, uh, uh, that's actually, of course, it may be lower than what the inflation figure is currently printing, uh, but you also don't forget that it's actually a sizable return when you compare to uh, where we used to be or what uh, used to be like the average return on, on, on that segment of the market. And also on the bond side as well, we've seen rates actually move uh, astronomically. Uh, we've seen us move from around 30 percent at the beginning of the year. Currently, we are now at uh, trading comfortably around okay. 20, not of 20 percent. A, a nine-year instrument currently trading about 22 percent. So you can see clearly that uh, there's a lot of opportunity in the right. space that uh, as we speak currently. Uh, okay. But what's the, the adverse effect? We're already feeling it. Uh, in the equity space. Absolutely. We're feeling the adverse effects in the equity space and we see the banking stocks even taking the deep even the more. Thank you so much, Aladipo Ajay, Head Fixed Income and Forex, Chapel Hill, Denham, for your time and thoughts on the show today. Yeah, most right. Thank you very much for having me on this morning.